strike that. Oops. Of course, I have lost my. Oh, that's because this has to be out of that in order to get back into the fabulous presentation. All right. Why doesn't my Google come back up? One second. No, I don't want that one because of that. But now my Google is back. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's go to our warm up. No, we don't need our presentation. We're going to our warm up. All right. So the warm up is as a result of COVID and the current state of technology, we are able to conduct our schoolwork over the web through Zoom. This has had the result of depersonalizing the classroom experience. Students who won't or don't turn on their cameras are only a name and a voice. How has that lack of visual identity in the Zoom interactions changed your in school experience from what you have known in the past? Are the effects all good? Are they all bad? Just write down a few thoughts. So I think everyone has had time to, to look at this and to do it. Anyone need more time? Okay. Um, what's that, Chantal? Or James? I was just going to say no. Okay. It's an accident, yeah. Oh, sorry. No worries. Uh, we all do that. Uh, so does somebody feel brave and want to share out on this or should I call randomly? I could share. Okay, that would um, be great. I just said that I like it's not as weird as I thought it would be. I said it's it can be good because sometimes since we're not seeing each other people's personalities really like come through and you get to meet the person without really meeting them like you because they're not being seen and they're not being judged and they can't see your like your reaction to what they're saying they're more honest and they're just themselves whereas in real life they might shy away and like kind of hide themselves in a way but at the same time it's bad because we don't see the person and then when we're going to be face to face one day we're not going to be able to recognize those people that we've made connections with and stuff. Really beautiful. That was very well expressed. Um, I think what's so interesting in there is that idea that, you know, for it, it, it's a combination. I don't think it's going to be a big hurdle to get to know each other once we can actually see each other. But I do think it provides you that place where you can, you know, just like, like you're saying that you can basically be yourself and no one is judging you on your physicality. Because normally we're getting a lot of cues from people by how they look, how they dress, what their facial expression is. That's a weird thing that I get. Like, what's it like living in a world where everyone's wearing a mask and all you see are their eyes? You don't see their whole face. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. Okay, I'd love to hear a couple more student thoughts. Uh, can someone else share their thoughts about what life on Zoom is like for you? Um, I touched base on like the learning system, like the, how the learning system is a lot different now than how it is when we were going to school. I was really worried about that because I wasn't sure how well I was really gonna get a grasp of the subject like as it's being taught like via a computer so I was really worried but I think for the most part my teachers have done a really good job of um like presenting the class like teaching it pretty well and they've attached like vi separate videos for like problems or assignments that everyone might have questions on right uh no I think it's it's the fear going into this like the fear of COVID it's the unknown um most of your fears come from things that you don't understand or you can't explain. And when you haven't done this before, it's very scary and intimidating. And I think for us too, as teachers, it's very scary and intimidating because 
it's a whole new environment. And I don't want to look bad. And I feel like I fumble around with my Zoom. Um, I want to be as professional as possible. But somehow the idea that we're all in it together certainly makes me feel better. Uh, so very beautiful. Uh, can someone else share? Let's see, what about Ryan McGaskey? What do you think about this whole Zoom situation? Um, well, uh, I, I do understand why people, I mean, keep their cameras off. I mean, there's, you know, shyness, anxiety, stress, but it, it does make it very hard to, you know, understand people. You know, I can't really see them. I don't know how they'll react or anything like that. I can't really get a read on them at all. It gets kind of confusing sometimes. Okay, that's a great observation. That it's, it's harder to gauge what someone's reaction is. And this is sort of similar to email, that in email, there's no tone. You can make a sarcastic joke and it just looks plain mean because there's no tone. You don't hear the smile in the person's voice and stuff. So when you can't see someone, it's hard to, like, like I say, we as humans in the natural world, we get a lot of our information visually. We get a lot of our information from visual cues from how someone is sitting or their facial expression or what they're wearing or whatever. And we just don't have that now. Let's do one more and then we'll get into uh, our lecture. Uh, what about Helen Orega? Um, Helen, what do you think about having to be in school on Zoom? I don't, I don't really like it personally because it's just harder to focus. And like with the amount of work the teachers are giving us, it's just, it's a lot. I don't know how to explain it and like, even if my camera were on or off, it's just hard for me to focus either way. I don't know, maybe it's because like the distraction. Yep, no, no, working at home, it sounds wonderful, but it's difficult. It, yeah. It's difficult to not want to do all the things you normally do at home. I know I have two sons, 12 and 14, and you know the idea that they can't get on their games during the school day is you know an issue we have to negotiate because they're in their room. There's you know I know nobody's watching over your shoulder, so it it is it, it's not ideal. Uh, again, it's a situation we're all forced into, so we don't have any choice. But I just wanted to hear a little about how you guys are experiencing this because I think we're all in this together, and just to hear a little about some of our feelings. Maybe when I look at these, I'll see if I can maybe pick out a few quotes that, that seem particularly meaningful. But thank you so much, everyone who shared this morning. I think your, your thoughts and observations are really uh, right on target, that it shows how different. One of the things I wanted to sort of have this show us is how a technology can have both positive and negative effects. As we get further into our program, we're going to need to be discussing the positive and negative effects of a technology or an advancement. Um, typically, there are always positive and negative effects, but sometimes it's hard to see them. So I thought it would be nice to talk about this as a way to look at a technology that is certainly helping us and it's allowing us to all be together in a time where we have to be separate. So I love that. That is a really positive thing in my books. If we couldn't be helping you to learn, I think it would be devastating um, for COVID. But in terms of a classroom, in terms of our group cohesiveness as a team, our ability to work together, it's a little up and down. I think it helps some people, it hurts some people, but I think it's also an interesting way to learn how are you treated by someone if no one can see who you are. They might make a guess based on your name or how you talk, but they can't 
see you. And it's sort of that thing of dating. It's like, I want you to like me, not my body. Now, all you're getting to see is the me because we don't get to see the body. All right, enough of that. Let's get into some fun technology through the ages. Uh, does anybody have any issues or questions with our paper? We're gonna have more time after this little lecture uh, to go over our papers, any questions, how we're trying to prepare for this and those kinds of things. Anybody? Okay, so I'm just gonna launch into this. Uh, basically, I'm gonna try and run through this relatively quickly. This is just going through our ages, listening to what some of the developments of technology were in those time periods and see if something appeals to you. Now, ideally, uh, let's see if, uh, okay, no, that's not what I want. Here we go. So I gave you two sheets in that, the bottom of the module. One is this list of technology through time. These are innovations, you know, the microscope, the rifle, the windmill, the lathe, uh, iron axes, spinning and weaving tools, burial of the dead, wheeled plow, the thermometer, the barometer. The question is, where do all these things fit in our time scale through the ages? The second piece that I gave to you is this nice sheet which just has blanks in it, and you should all be able to edit on this. Uh, so as we talk about these inventions and stuff, you can write in, Paleolithic and Mesolithic are gonna be our Stone Age. I took out in this, in the full course, there are actually 12 periods. Uh, but so we're only studying six. And so I took out Middle Ages, which we're actually gonna see, uh, we're grouping Middle Ages in with the Renaissance for our purposes. We're grouping Mesolithic in with the Stone Age. Then we have Bronze Age, Iron Age, Renaissance, Industrial Age, and Information Age. So these boxes are just to let you write down thoughts of inventions, technologies in that period that might interest you. So this is just to help you. It's not to turn in or anything. This is just a way to start thinking about what you want to be presenting. Okay, technology is in a, uh, hang on, let's get into present mode. Technology is in a constant state of change as humans continue to improve and innovate old technologies for new applications. This is sort of every time you go to the, the supermarket, there is a new and different laundry detergent with a very old name on it. Uh, new is a branding strategy, new and different is why you need to buy this product again. You've got the old version. What you want is the new version. And you'll see what a big role marketing and telling people ideas that they hadn't thought on their own can do for helping to sell your technology or your invention. Uh, things you need to know. When did technology begin? Okay, up for the class. Who's gonna answer this one? I think technology began when we decided to like form a civilization and instead of just like each one for their own, you know, like. No, well, that, that's a great thought. And I agree with you. That seems like the right thing. But remember how basic our basic definition is. Think of our basic definition. When did technology begin? I think well, if, oh, you can go. Oh, okay. I was going to say that, like, ever since, I guess, humans were on Earth, maybe, because it's hu anything man-made. So as long as that human made something, then that's considered technology. The, the idea is, think back to that video, the animated video we had. The, the line was crossed when Homo sapiens began making tools. In theory, I think that's the first behavior that separates us from the natural world. The question is, when did we start acting outside of the natural world 
in our technological world that we are shaping. So the moment Homo sapiens decided that I could, you know, with uh, an example in a video I saw is smash a bone to get at the marrow, that was when technology was born. I don't know what that first thing someone invented. It was probably using a sharp rock to cut something and saying, hey, this works. Okay, where were the first inventions? This is a good question. Can anyone answer where were the first inventions? If Homo sapiens is the founder of our technology, where was Homo sapiens when they came up with their first inventions? Where or what were the first inventions? Where? Where? You all should know this just in general. I'll give you a hint. It was called Olduvai Gorge. What country or what continent is Olduvai Gorge on? Africa? Africa, correct. <laughs> so it goes back to the Leakeys. The Leakey family uh, is an amazing family of archaeologists and they found the oldest human tools in the world. And I believe they're about a million and a half years old. Uh, but that was in Olduvai Gorge. And I wanna say it's Ethiopia. I, I'm not quite sure exactly where Olduvai Gorge is. I know it's on the East Coast or towards the East Coast, about in the middle of Africa, uh, maybe two thirds of the way up. Okay. How did technology impact humans? This is a pretty simple answer. Someone who has an answer can answer this. How did technology impact Homo sapiens? It helps people like solve problems and make things easier for themselves. Exactly. That's, that's all technology in the Stone Age was about. How can I make my ability to survive a little better? How can I make you know, this task a little better? And that's just, you know, that's where you start from. You want to make yourself, make your situation a little better. Okay. Technology, a new definition. Human innovation in action that involves the generation of knowledge and processes to develop systems that solve problems and extend human capabilities. So that's a pretty long definition, but it seems to encompass our initial humans making things and our perception of modern technology as electronics. So it's human technology is defined as human innovation in action that involves the generation of knowledge and processes to develop systems that solve problems and extend human capabilities. One of the things that sets Homo sapiens apart from all other species is the idea that we maintain our history, that what somebody learned last year, I can learn this year from something they've written down or a video they made, that I can, I can accumulate all the knowledge that came before me, which was not able to happen. Before that, it was your genetic knowledge that you relied on. Uh, your parents could teach you something but they did not have all the knowledge of their ancestors. This is where oral tradition came from. Okay. Uh, history is defined as a chronological record of significant events, often including an explanation of their causes. Okay, Paleolithic age. So this is Stone Age, 500,000 BC. I think we're going from about 2 million down to about 3,000 BC. So this is 500,000 to 10,000 BC, the Paleolithic age. Archeological period characterized by the earliest known stone tool manufacture. Uh, artifacts are stone axes, bone needles, hearth sites. That's where they had fires. Uh, impacts on history, improved diet and enhanced security enabled early humans to increase their numbers. The Mesolithic Age, we're grouping this in with our Stone Age. This is more of a transitional period. Uh, so 
the period between the Paleolithic and the Neolithic associated with the rise and dominance of microlithics, very small geometric form tools commonly used in composite tools. That's a very strange sentence. Microlithics are, lithic is stone. So micro is little stones. Very small geometric form tools commonly used in composite tools. We'll see if we learn about that. Artifacts are leatherwork, basketry, fishing, tackle, stone axes, wooden objects, canoes and bows, domesticating animals, stone circles, and hinges, so like Stonehenge. Impact on history. The gradual domestication of plants and animals led to the beginnings of settled communities. Bronze Age, 2300 BC to 700 BC, includes the earliest civilizations and the development of metallurgy. Metallurgy is the study of metal making, the ability to smelt metal, to melt metal and mold it, which is much easier than having to bang it into a shape. Uh, so the development of metallurgy, mainly combining of copper and tin to make bronze. Artifacts are bronze jewelry, tools, and weapons. Impact on history. Stone tools were gradually replaced by metal ones that enabled humans to alter their environment at a great rate. Greek and Roman engineers. Uh, these are sort of getting lumped into uh, Renaissance, I believe. Um, Greek engineers created the crossbows and catapult, the crossbow and the catapult to conquer territories. Uh, the reason you wanted a crossbow was that it could fire a bolt through armor, even through iron armor. Um, Roman engineers created aqueduct systems, sanitary systems, and extensive road systems in addition to the first steam engine was created during the Roman Empire. Uh, so, I'm sorry, Romans were supposed to be after Iron Age. Uh, so the Iron Age is 700 BC to 450 AD. Iron used as the main metal artifact. So the Romans are right here during this Iron Age, um, Romans and Greeks. Iron used as the main source of metal. Artifacts are iron chisels, iron ornamentation, uh, ornamental jewelry, swords, axes, and spearheads. So a lot of military impact. Impact on history. Military dominance for uses of iron weapons and use of iron-bladed plows enabled humans to increase food production. Iron was much stronger than bronze. So Middle Ages. Uh, Middle Ages is what we're going to lump. So we're going to put Romans in them. Their technology goes into uh, the Iron Age, Middle Ages is going to go into the Renaissance. So I just figured that it was nicer to, to learn about this and to leave these time periods out. Uh, 450 to 1400 AD, period of time between the fall of Rome and the Renaissance. Artifacts, wheeled plow, horseshoes, water mills, windmill, cast iron, cannons, compass, ocean going ships. Impact on history, is the rise of money and capitalism, rise and fall of feudalism, beginning of urbanization and industrialization. Uh, this was also when the Black Plague happened, had a big impact on Europe uh, and China and all of Asia. Um, okay, what's interesting here to me, they're starting to harness energy sources, using water to create energy that can be used to, draw, to power something. This is brand new. The windmill, to use wind to capture energy to, to drive typically a millstone, that the windmills were used to, to turn grains into flour. Uh, Middle Age engineers, Arab society developing paper and chemistry applications. Chinese society was developing clocks and gunpowder and astronomical instruments. The word engineer began to appear, began to appear. Its roots lie in the Latin word ingeniare, I think that's how you'd say it, uh, to design or devise. The Renaissance or the Enlightenment. Humanistic revival of classical influence. 
artifacts, telescope, microscope, thermometer, clocks, barometer. Barometer lets you tell the weather. It measures the atmospheric pressure. Impact on society, instrumentation allowed scientists to observe and test natural phenomena much more accurately than they had ever been able to in the past. This is probably one of Galileo's early telescopes. Okay, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo was born in Italy in 1452. Beginning his career as an artist, painting and sculpting, he was soon put to work designing weapons by the Medicis. The Medicis were his big uh, supporters in Florence. Uh, so for them, he designed weapons, buildings, and machinery. See the interactive site for some of these discoveries. Galileo. Galileo was an, ama Galileo was an amazing scientist. Again, vilified in his own time uh, because he was thinking and saying things that weren't allowed or that weren't, you know, even in the 1500s were not politically correct. Uh, that they, they went against the church and stuff. Uh, so he had a very difficult life. Galileo was born in Italy in 1564. Throughout his career, Galileo discovered many physics properties. He's the one who dropped the big ball and the little ball off the Leaning Tower of Pisa, showing that they both hit the ground at the same time because they are both under the same influence of gravity. Uh, many physics properties, see the interactive sites, uh, the Industrial Age, first use of complex machinery and factories, social changes from agricultural societies, people started moving to the cities to get jobs, to pay money. Uh, wages, wages were invented in the Middle Ages. Uh, you used to be, the feudal system meant that everybody worked for the lord of the manor. But once the Black Plague came through and wiped out half of the serfs, all of a sudden, the lords realized they didn't have enough workers to get in their harvest. And they actually started having to pay people to do their harvest. And this all of a sudden gave the serfs the idea they were worth something. And they started to try and negotiate for better wages and standards for their service. So that was a big change all brought about by the Black Plague because it wiped out the workforce. The workforce that was relatively voluntary because they had a debt to their feudal lord. Um, so artifacts of the industrial age, steam engine, electricity, automobile, airplane, radio, television, telephone, rocket, impact on history, gave rise to urban centers requiring municipal services. I hate to say, the urban centers were given rise at the dawn of civilization uh, and municipal services. Population expansion, improvements in living standards. Uh, industrial age engineers. James Watt refines the steam engine for practical use. Alessandro Volta discovers the principles for a battery. Uh, Pieter von Muschenbrock creates the forerunner of the capacitor. Henry Ford creates the concept of the assembly line. Now look at those names. That's again, this is one of the beauties of America, is we are a nation of immigrants. Uh, most people came to America originally fleeing something oppressive or they had no food, like the potato famine of Ireland. But look at these names, James Watt, Alessandro Volta, obviously from Italy, uh, I'm guessing Pieter von Muschenbroek is German. Uh, I'm not sure what the roots of Mr. Watt or Mr. Ford are. But our country is made so rich by the contributions of so many people from so many different backgrounds. And as I've said, for engineering, different backgrounds make for great products. So last slide, information age, 1950 to AD present. Uh, central to society is gathering, manipulation, classification, storage, and retrieval of information. Artifacts, the transistor. I don't know what IC stands for. Uh, computer, satellite, digital photography, artificial heart, nuclear power plant, space shuttle, uh, impact on history, decentralization of decision-making, and empowering more people. Okay. 
So we have about 15 minutes left. Um, let me get out of this and look back at, oh, where did my, Uh, no, I don't want that one. I want the PDF of tools. Okay. Um, let me ask you guys. So your project is going to be due next Tuesday. You need to be looking at these six time periods. The Paleolithic and Mesolithic are going to be uh, gathered together as the Stone Age. We're not touching the Neolithic. We're gonna do Bronze Age, Iron Age. Uh, the Renaissance is gonna include any Middle Age things. Uh, the Iron Age will include any Roman things, uh, Greek, uh, Industrial Age, and then Information Age. What we've got, so, Somebody started adding some things to this. You can make a copy of this for yourself, uh, whatever you'd like to help you during this. But these, no, hang on, I swear that was, that's what, let's get rid of this. Uh, oh, help, that's not what I want. That's the answer sheet. Where did my tools go? There we are, okay, the tools are in here. Um, so what you're going to do, you're going to need to find either an item from each technological era that you think is interesting. You're going to need to research it, show me a picture of it, explain what it is, how it was used, and ideally something about why it was developed in that time period. So these can range from the microscope to an iron axe to ocean going ships, to pottery, to an iron dagger, metal jewelry, digital photography, domesticated animals. This is your time to start doing some research and figuring out what you'd like to do your project on and how you're gonna do it. You can work by yourself. You can ask me questions. I can put people into breakout rooms if you wanna be in smaller groups to try and work. Uh, what do you guys think would be the best help for you for the next, you know, 13 minutes? No, no, you, nothing has to be from this list. Somebody's just asking if your item needs to be from this list. This is all today's lecture, the list, and this template that you can break out your, your items into groupings. These are all just organizational tools if you have not already figured out exactly what you want to do and how you want to make your presentation. These are hopefully going to give you some ideas, one of what kind of tools and innovations were happening in our time periods. I thought that might be a big help to reinforce it. No, no, this is the technology in the museum assignment. Wait, so like, can I pick, um, do I pick any stone age, I mean, any age? Or like, do I pick these ages? You have to create a presentation that has six slides in it mm -hmm. with one innovation, six slides for each of our time periods. Our time periods are Stone Age, which on this timeline sheet is including Paleolithic and Mesolithic, mm -hmm. the Bronze Age, the Iron Age, which we're saying includes the Roman and Greek inventions, because that's within that time period. Then the Renaissance, which I'm saying you can use Middle, middle Ages uh, inventions in there, or the indust and the Industrial Age and the Information Age. So our three ages are Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age, Renaissance, Industrial Age, and Information Age. All right, so we write about six ages? You need to, sh on a slide, you need at least six slides or seven slides. One is your title slide, one slide for each of our ages, and you need one invention 
one technological development from that time period on your slide from that time period. Okay. Uh, Thank you. You then need to describe what that technology is, how it was used, and ideally why this technology was invented during this time period or was important to this time period. Okay. Okay. All of that should be on the instructions. Uh, let me see if I can get to them. Okay. So if I go back to modules. It's in the rubric for the assignment. Right. Uh, so here's the assignment. If I download this, this is, this is our instructions. Uh, create a virtual museum presentation of artifacts from the different time periods or ages. You will research various tools and technological resources that were developed and used during different technological ages. After you conduct your research, produce a PowerPoint presentation or Google Slides that contains images and descriptions of the objects of objects from each major time period listed above. What we went over in the last class was the idea that some people might want to follow one technology through time, like someone was saying medicine or clothing. Um, you're not required to do that. You can just pick something that really excites you from each time period. But the way that you're going to be graded is you're going to create a PowerPoint presentation that describes one object from each major time period Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age, Renaissance, Industrial Revolution, and Information Age. <coughs> Each of these categories will be five points. Describe the purpose of, you know, what it did and why of the object that, you know, or technology that you've chosen. Describe the function, how it worked. I understand those two are relatively similar of the object. Um, so basically, you know, one, is the iron axe. The iron axe was invented during the Iron Age because bronze axes were too soft. Uh, the axe was, you know, so that's our description of, well, actually that's a couple of things. That's the description and also part of why that was invented during this time period, because they'd learned how to work with iron. Uh, the purpose of the axe was in warfare to take out your enemies. Uh, the iron axe was able to cleave bronze armor, uh, and then you include an image. So describing your item is five points. Uh, the purpose, you know, the purpose of your item. Describe the function of your item. Uh, explain why the item was developed during the time period in which it was used. And then lastly is an image of the item. For a lot of these, they're going to have to be drawings or paintings or something because nobody had cameras back in the Stone Age or you know, the, re the Renaissance. Uh, you're just gonna save your thing and you're gonna turn it in through Canvas. Okay, uh, let's see. The chariot, that's a fun one. Um, how are people doing? Do you have good ideas of where you wanna go with this? Um, are there any particular technologies that you're finding particularly fascinating or like you didn't know were available in a particular era? Um, I guess a better question is, is this a help to you to have 15 minutes to just work on your projects? Everyone seems <laughs> very yeah. quiet. Did someone have an idea? Is this helping you? Is this hurting you? Is it confusing you? It's a good thing? Yeah. Okay. Um, but just let me know if you have any questions or, you know, I can start looking things up. So let's just try that. Let's say most interesting technology in Bronze Age. Let's see what we get. Ooh, 12 tools that were invented during the Bronze Age. Kites, kites were invented. That's a cool one, I hadn't even thought of it. 
A carp's tongue sword. I'm a little scared as to what that means. A socketed axe. Uh, what a socketed axe means is an axe with a hole in the, in the metal where the handle went through. So you could break the handle and then replace it without having to, you know, do something. The sickle sword. We're guessing that's for harvesting. Uh, the bronze axes. The plow was invented. Most discussions. Chariots. I love chariots. Uh, so let's look up. Wait, Stone Ages made clothing? They made clothing is a technology. Yeah, but Stone the Stone Ages made one made invented the clothes clothing. You'd have to think. Uh, it's it's our only I mean they had to let's 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 look that up. Let's try clothing in Stone Age. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it says they, they were the first people to wear. Part of what I'm looking for is, is a good source. Oh, okay. Uh, what, well, but, but here's, you know, interesting. Let's just look at images of clothing. That we're, we're guessing that these are sourced from accurate things. Um, uh, you know, here's an interesting, oops, no, that takes us to an Amazon ad. That's not going to help us. Uh, do we like explain like what they made and why they made it? You don't need to. Again, I want this to be your presentation. I want this to be something that, you know, you're the curator of the museum. So you're going to, this, ideally, this is going to be a professional pr presentation that's going to be displayed to the public. Um, what you'll find, I think, is one slide gets pretty small in terms of, you know, your room that you have in it for explanation and those things. You can use multiple slides, that's fine. Uh, but Typically, when you go to a museum, you're not getting the whole history of whatever the item is you're seeing. You're getting what we call a blur. It's a little paragraph, maybe two, three sentences that summarizes what they feel is most important that you should know about this. Okay. So that's basically what you're going to be doing, but you are going to need to, you're going to get five points for describing the purpose what this item did and why uh, of an object from each time period. So my example was the iron ax. You know, what was its purpose? What was its function? You know, it was used for chopping up people and chopping up wood. Uh, the critical function was it for protection. Uh, why each item was developed during the time period in which it was used. The iron ax was developed because bronze was softer than iron and iron could wreak havoc on bronze weapons and bronze armor. So it was a superior tool uh, for your army to have, particularly if you were facing people who had bronze armor and then you need an image. So it's a little explanation on the purpose, how it, then the function, how it worked, uh, and then why was it developed? So that's a fair amount of stuff to fit on one slide with a nice picture. So this is, you know, a fun part of research and presentation. You need to massage your language. You know, we're going to need to compress what we're saying down to the most meaningful bits that we can about it uh, because we just don't have that much room. But I think a couple sentences for each of those, you know, one describing the purpose, two the function, three to explain why it was developed. That should fit on a nice slide with, with an image, but you need to invent this yourself. You need to look at your slides and see, does that feel right? Would it be better if I had a big slide of the image and then a second slide of the explanation? See what makes sense to you. You're learning how to use technology to deliver what you need.
Okay, class is basically over. It is 9.59. Does anyone have any questions or problems? You know, basically you're gonna be turning in at least seven slides come next Tuesday. If for some reason you need to go to the high holidays, you're going to colleges and need to be a little late, just shoot me an email and we can make it due on Thursday. Any questions? If not, I'll stop sharing and we can say goodbye. Bye. Good luck. I can't wait to see you. Uh, Bye. Thank you. You bet. James, Josue, do you have a question?